Hi everyone, it's Lillian here coming to you from Alberta, Canada. And usually I come Monday evenings, but I moved it up by a few hours today. So I'm here at one o'clock. Next week I should be back at the seven o'clock time zone. Uh, time slot, pardon me. So, so glad you can join me today, uh, whether you're watching me live or, um, or if you're watching the replay, that's great. And if you're watching on YouTube, that's great. Um, if you're watching me now, just before I go down to my desk, why don't you hit that share button uh, so somebody else in, that you know that likes to craft can enjoy this. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Oh, hi, Karen. So glad you're here. I'm so glad to see somebody could join me at the new time slot just for this week. So glad to have you here. And I've got a technique that's, well, it's new to me, so maybe it'll be new to some of you too. So uh, let's get it up and going. And while that's happening, while I'm trying to get the computer stuff going, uh, when you leave a comment when I'm doing a Facebook Live, and it can be even in the replay, um, be sure to uh, be sure to know that your name will be entered in a draw and then sorry I'm just clicking buttons and I really shouldn't try to do more than one thing at a time it does not work well at all so let me just finish what I'm doing so um so back to this when you leave a comment your name gets drawn or put in a draw a random draw for the card for the next week so this was last week's card last monday night now i did two facebook lives last week and this was last monday nights and rosalind a so rosalind if you uh, can message me with your mailing address i'll pop this into the mail with for you and congratulations so let's uh move on here something exciting is coming uh, coming very soon in fact, and that is Stamping Staycation. It is going to happen on May the 7th, but registration begins next Monday. So watch for posts here on Facebook, for posts on Instagram, for posts uh, for my newsletter, all those kinds of things. And uh, that will be happening soon. It's a wonderful time for the one class fee you get well, more than six different um, tutorials, video demonstrations, that kind of thing. You also get three extra uh, tip time ones. You get a secret stamping thing. There's, it's just a day chock full that you can either watch that day, watch on another day, or break it up into small sections and have a little staycation several different days. So. Uh, be watching for that. Um, even if you're busy May 7th, you can take it anytime you want after that. Um, so registration begins next Monday. So be watching for that. And let's put that over there. Now, what am I... Oh, I wanted one more announcement before I go on. Sorry. The Every year, Stamping Up brings out what they call in colors. And the in colors are good for two years and then they retire. So this year we're getting ready for a new catalog and these are the colors that are going to be retiring. Cinnamon Cider, Misty Moonlight, Just Jade, uh, Bumblebee and Magenta, Magenta Madness. I'm sort of blanking out on the names. So if you like all of these colors, any of these colors, make sure you stock up. These go out of stock almost immediately, and the retiring list is coming out on Wednesday. So, and I know some of these are on low already. So, those that's the card stock. Check your ink pads, and remember, if you have the ink pads, do you have the reinkers? Um, so if you have the reinkers, they're going. Your ink pads are going to last for years before you run out of ink, because you can just refresh them with your reinkers. So please, if you have the ink pads, make sure you have the reinkers and order them as soon as possible, because they will sell out, guaranteed, right away. And speaking of which, which of these retiring in colors? Is the one you're going to miss the most. Would it be Cinnamon Cider, Misty Moonlight, 
Just Jade, Bumblebee, Magenta Madness. Which one have you used the most or you're going to miss the most, do you think? All right, and while you're typing that in, I am bringing in a product that we chatted about a whole lot at the beginning of this particular annual catalog. It was new. It was called Gilded Leafing. And um, I have to admit, it took me a while to get on board because I was just a little bit nervous about this. But this is wonderful stuff. And today I'm going to show you a technique using it. Now, if you remember, oh, I don't know when it would be. Remember, I showed you some paper looking like this with the gold in it a couple of weeks ago. And I said I was going to show you how to do it. Well, it, it this was done with the gilded leafing. So I'm going to sh make a card with you and show you how to do this. So let's have a look, see here. So the card pieces that I'm going to use are, first of all, and I forgot to write the measurements down. I'm sorry. This is thick basic white because the thick is so nice and sturdy and it is just four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half so just your basic card the card itself that we're making today is pretty simple because I wanted to really really showcase the gilded leafing then we're bringing in a piece of the oceans Ocean Wave designer paper. It's just so pretty, this paper. And I've cut a rectangle out of it. So the piece of the designer paper is four by five and a quarter. And the rectangle is the rectangle that measures about two and a quarter by three and a half. So that one like that. So there we go. We've got that piece. This is going to go directly on here and I'll do that in a minute this is what we're going to have fun with then I have the next largest rectangle um, and it's going to layer like that and just sort of cover up that hole that we made so we'll put that to the side then I'm going to bring in some of the new blue foils that's with the ocean waves of the ocean set our collection of products they're just gorgeous I think we're going to use this that's my plan anyway I've also got a piece of the um, oh, layering vellum paper that has the designs on it and some gold and um, gold foil so let's get to the technique first off the first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring in your uh, silicone mat and you're going to bring in your multi-purpose liquid glue and you want to do just fine little bits of glue on here and not too many I'll show you what happened well I'll show you right now when I was doing this one this was my second try you see how the gold is this was my first try. Look, I got a little carried away with my glue and it got a little too thick. So I ended up with, and for some things, this might be a good look, but I ended up with thick gold and maybe a bit too much of it. So I flipped it over and tried this side. And this is the New Horizons paper and did just a little bit and it got that. So I have learned to start with just a little bit. You can always add more, right? Now this paper has a bit of a swirl to it. I'm going to just make sure I'm just, I want just the, the barest, littlest trickle if possible. That's, that's even thick. I'm going right about here. Follow this swirl. Ooh, that got carried away there. I'm going to go here a little bit. And I'll go a bit here. Isn't it funny how sometimes you can get just a nice thin little line of this glue and other times it just comes out. And of course, because I want to show you, I am getting it a little bit thick. You could always resort to a toothpick or, or if you have the fine tip glue pen, that might work too. I'm sure it would actually. So with the gold leafing, 
I'll just add just a little bit where it's hard to know when to stop. With the gold leafing, the thing to remember when you're using it is that it is almost lighter than air and you don't want a fan going anywhere. You do not want a breeze. So if it's windy out and you've got your window open, close it. And you don't want to cough or sneeze or anything like that. So because it will just fly everywhere. That, that's just the way it is. Now this little packet here of the gilded leafing can expand to fill multiple, multiple layers of things. So what I did is I brought in a plastic container that has a lid. I'm just going to put that to the side. And I put just a little bit. Now you can see I've got quite a bit in there it looks like, but look at how full this looks. Looks like I didn't take anything out. And I have used this a fair amount. So um, you are going to want to do that. Then you're going to want to have something that's going to brush it off. Otherwise it all sticks to your fingers. At least it does to mine. So I am actually using a blending brush. You could use a makeup sponge. And I've got one in here that I just keep in here. You could use a paintbrush. Uh, you can use whatever. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to take the lid off carefully. It's very staticky too. So you can see it's sticking to the lid even. And there we go. We're going to put that to the side. And one of the reasons I chatted a little bit, I did want to have this um, the, the white glue sort of dry a little bit. No, it's not totally, um, but it's drying a little bit. And then I'm just going to take it and see all these flakes here. I'm just going to push it down into it, give it a good rub. Now this is where it looks really weird. When you pick it up, look what happens. <laughs> not the look you're going for, and you might panic at that point, but don't. This is where you want to start brushing things off. And we'll take the bigger chunks off first. You can see I've got that makeup sponge in there if I happen to lose this. And this is another reason why you do want to um, let your glue dry a little bit. It brushes off a little bit more here. So, um, or pardon me, the glue... If it's dry, it doesn't stick to your brush or anything. Now, now you can just keep brushing until you're happy with it. But look at how that's transformed here. Let me bring this in. This was what the paper looked like initially. And now look when it's got a bit of gold in it. Isn't that a neat effect? So gold leafing, all you need is something sticky. And I'm going to give you a few other ideas at the end for doing it. Um, there, I think that looks good. I got a little glob of glue there, but actually I don't mind that. Now I'm going to try to fit all the rest back in. And whoops, I meant to leave that out. I could leave it in too. It just gets so loaded with the, with the leafing. I'm going to move that out of the way. And now we have this effect right here. So can you imagine um, different designer papers that we have, or even just basic cardstock, if you stamped an image on it and then added some of this? So let's make the card and then we'll talk a little bit more. So we're going to bring this in, and I mentioned that we are going to glue this right down. So let's do that right away. Like that. Oh, now, better remember which way I was going here. I guess we're going to go that way. And you might say, what were you doing, Lillian? Well, it's sort of like a puzzle piece. And even though there's going to be a layer in between, I could have just popped this up. Um, I want the design to look like it's flowing because our eye likes that. So that's the way it needs to go. So you can see I'm getting some leafing here that fell off. That's all right. So now we're going to put this on top of this. And I forgot to do something before I did that. I wonder if it's stuck down. Yeah, it's stuck down. I'll do something different. I'll make it up as we go along. All right. So here we go. Let's stick this down like that.
And this is going to go on dimensionals. I'll put the dimensionals on, but I'm not going to stick it down right now. There we go. So th there's sort of the look that we have here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little banner here. And I want to flag, just there we go, flag this end. And this is a little wider than some of our banner bunch punches. So I'm bringing in the tailored tag, this one here. And I'm going to slide this in from the end and just do a little punch like that. And there we've got a flagged end. So that remember, you can use your punches in different ways. You just have to think about how to do it. So I do want to do my original plan and I've got this stuck down and I don't um, want it stuck down right now because I forgot something. So I am going to show you, first of all though, I am going to just score this piece of vellum at half an inch so it's ready and then just fold it over. So now I've got just a little flap to fold over and eventually it's gonna go underneath that. So when you stick something down and it's not where you want it, what do you do? You can get that heat tool of yours and heat that up and soften the glue. So, um, let me just, heat up the area that I want to lift the paper off. And this works with pretty much any of our glues, our dimensionals, even our tear and tape, whatever. Just heat it up. Now I'm going to test it and see. Notice I'm leaving my heat tool running because that way it's going to stay hot. It needs a little bit more. This should just about be there now. There, notice how easily that lifts up. So that's how you can fix a mistake like that. Let me just put my heat tool down. Now we're going to bring this in and I want it, oh, I better put some adhesive on the back of that. Let's just see, I'm gonna put my bone folder to hold that in place and I'll put some seal on the back of that. There we go. And I'm going to just stick it down and believe it or not, this will still be sticky. So, so now it looks a little bit weird. So this looks like a flap here. That's okay. We're going to now put this here like that and this is going to flap over that. You, you're with me now? Little side trip there. So let's put this down. And looks like I, when I cut it out, I got it a bit crooked, but I can, because I've got the border, it's easy to fix. All right, now we're going to put this to the side because we want to put make some lettering for on here. So we have in the catalog, we have this wonderful set of letters. Some of them are really wide and some are skinny and they layer beautifully on top of each other. We're going to use the word thanks. So I've already cut the word, the, the, the bubbly ones out of gold foil paper. Now I'm bringing in the um, blue foils and I was thinking I was going to do this in the skinnier uh, one just because I thought it would be a pop of color. But I'm, I'm not going to use the silver because we're using gold already. But I could have used the, this one as well. So which do you think? The I'm going to call this the Coastal Cabana Blue or the Pacific Point Blue to layer on top of the things. Which do you think? Um, and I'm going to also bring in the um, adhesive sheet. So 
Um, there we go. I've got that. And just while you're writing in your answers, I wanted to point out something. The um, the words, do you know what? One of the things I love about these words, for the ones that have eyes, the dot is connected. So you're not looking for a little tiny circle. So I love that part of it too. So we are sort of split down the middle, Coastal Cabana or Pacific Point. And I really can't, oh, you know what? I cut this to match this, so that'll be my decision. Um, so what I have here is a piece of adhesive sheet. By the way, you could put this adhesive sheet on some just white cardstock, basic white, and do gold leafing on this too. So can you imagine if you did like a square of it and then put some strips of designer paper and left spaces and then, ooh, yeah, that would look nice. All right, but I digress. Let's, let's get the adhesive sheet on here. Now remember, our adhesive sheets do come six by 12. I just cut this down and I made it a little bit smaller than the sheet that I'm cutting. So when I put it in my die cutting machine, um, it's not going to gum up the plates. So there, let's bring in a little, the little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm going to move this just because it slips and slides. Uh, when it's on there. So here's the mini, which is on sale right now, by the way. And guess what? These dies all fit in there. So, okay, now what did I, there it is. I almost lost the die. Um, there we go. So we've got this. We're going to put this down. Now remember, because it's a word, you want to put it down like this because if you did it on the back side your word's going to be just the mirror image so you don't want to do that you want to have it this way around and i just have to, my computer did something here just have to reactivate it there we go so now and i'm going to put this on top double check that everything's lined up nicely and run it through. A little awkward to do on camera, but it, it works. There we go. Bring this back in. And then we're just going to pop it out and it's going to be just like a sticker. Look at that. And I'll use my pokey tool and fix that later. So let's bring in our silicone mat. We've got our gold and we've got this. We just need now to take the backing off. Now there's that sometimes those just pop out when you take the backing off but we'll take that right now. So we'll peel the backing off. Hardest part likely is getting it started. There we go. And when it's spindly like this, sometimes you have to be in not too big a hurry. And then it just all comes off beautifully. Now, just a little tip. Because it's skinny, you can change the shape so easily, which we don't want to do right now. There might be the occasion. So I'm keeping my fingers underneath here where it's sticky. And I'm going to start here and get that lined up first. So, and then just gradually move my fingers down and guide the pieces so that they don't get distorted. Now, if you wanted just the word thank, like if thank you, you could take your scissor, your snips and just cut around here and you'd have the word thank because there is a you, like for thank you in the, um, in the set. So here we go. It's going to go like that, and I think I'm going to put some mini dimensionals behind there. And let's just do that. We'll look for where it's a little bit thicker. Make sure there can be hidden. And so when I'm working on something like this, where I'm afraid they might show, I always peek from the other side and make sure you can't see any dimensionals. Make them nice and uh, discreet. Right, there we go. 
and we'll take those backings off. Whoops, not the dimensional itself. Got a little carried away there. And you might say, why haven't you glued the vellum down? It's because I'm going to put my adhesive where, where it's going to be hidden by the word thanks. So now we've got the word thanks like that. Now I can put my adhesive behind those letters and I know it's not going to show. In fact, I can just put a dab right wherever. I'll put one extra one there, wherever the dimensionals are. And there we go, just like that. And I forgot to bring over my gems, but I could stop right here. I could add the rhinestones as well, but this is just one sort of classy, fancy schmancy card. And you've got this gold leafing, just adding that richness to it. Um, so I also had a little piece, so I put some on this and guess what I'm going to do with that? The inside, if I've got scraps, might as well go for it. And I will tell you this, once you start to play with the gold leafing this way, you're going to see all kinds of ways that you can add it to projects. So there's our card. So let me just show you a few other ways of using the gold leafing. Um, I was having a little bit of fun. So the, the, where I learned this was from a demonstrator named Wendy Lee. And um, she used the marble, the Simply Marvelous paper from um, Staycation, from Staycation, I've got Staycation on the brain, from Celebration, and she did it in every color. So, you, the, you know, this, this paper here, so she, she did that, and so I cased one of hers, and here is hers. So she did some with... Um, the light on the background. She said it's somewhat the dark up here, a um, few jewels and just like that. So there's that. And now let me just show you once again, that maybe I didn't even show you. I had it open and ready. The gold leafing can be found on page 143. It's right here. And often people stick it down by using a product called heat and stick, which is a little bit like embossing powder, um, but you don't want to heat it too much. But And some people say, well, I don't have heat and stick, but there's, let me just share, because I just shared, you can use this. Let's see what else we can use. We can use um, tear and tape. So let's bring in some tear and tape right here and I'm going to bring in, here we go, like this. Whoops, I want, I'll overhang it a little bit. I can always trim it off. So I'm going to put, I'll put a couple of strips. Oh, right at the end of this roll. Good thing I'm only planning a couple of strips like that. And then snip that off. Then what I did was peel the backing off and then dipped it in here, just like I did. And it, this was solid gold when I brushed it all off. And I have a card here. It's the same layout as last week and this ended up with this nice ridge of gold here. Some people have used tear and tape around um, picture frames and added some gold leafing and decorated it that way. So you can add it like that. Another way that you can use the gold leafing is uh, much like what we did, but you could have a scene, say for example, an underwater scene, and then you could add a bit of the glue and then just a bit of this, and then you've got um, your gold peeking through your underwater scene, just like that. So this again is that o waves of the ocean paper. Um, so I think, oh, you can use glue dots. So for example, if you put some glue dots onto some of your projects and then put it into the gold leafing, you would have it that way too. So anything that's going to be sticky, 
is going to hang on to the gold leafing. Just remember, you just have to brush it off afterwards and you can have all kinds of fun. So I hope that encourages you to try the gold leafing. I, I am one of those people that I really hesitated. I thought, oh, it's messy. It's not my style, that kind of thing, but I'm finding I'm using it a lot. It is, it is really fun. And can you imagine if you did gold leafing on some paper or something like this, just a little bit in the clouds? Ooh, it would be so nice. All right. So there's your little challenge about uh, gold leafing. And now let's have some sh um, sh show and tell. So I received this gorgeous card from Irene. So Irene, thank you. I just love this. And I love the die cut and how dramatic it is there. And instead of white, she used very vanilla, which I need to get back in the habit of using. I'm sort of out of practice with very vanilla. Then um, from Diana, I received this card in a swap. So there's the envelope. And ironically, this was a card that I taught at the same time. So um, this my downline meeting. And so here it is here. And then it opens like this. So there is the neat fold like that. So there. So very neat card, Diana. Thank you. Um, this is a card that I was playing around with just making a window in a card, putting designer paper in the window and then putting an image there. So a very simple card, um, very um, clean, I guess, but I, I was happy with how that turned out. The bicycle is from that windmill die, by the way. Um, then I received this in a swap and this is so neat. I love how the the leaves just hang down like that and this is somebody after my own heart using designer paper um, as a, the main part of the card and then she do you notice this here that designer paper she punched it out of here used it here and but then the opening is for a gift card holder so this was from barb so thank you so much barb what a, a neat idea then I received this from one of my downline from Wendy and she's used the tulips. Um, this is the one that's in the annual catalog. Oh, what's the name of it? Timeless tulips. I love this. Uh, I've actually, this is my go-to set for sympathy cards because there's some wonderful sympathy sayings in there. But just uh, a gorgeous card there, so spring-like. Then from Lynn. This is a, a slimline card and she stamped the ocean wave twice and just made it look like that. And then she used the, um, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, an embossing folder to make the background some interesting like that. So I loved that. Received this from my downline mark. This, especially after yesterday's weather, made me really wish I could go jump right inside this card. Um, but great palm tree. I like how the this here, um, that's the double embossing folder in the mini catalog. Stripes and splotches, I think it's called. And then a, this here like that and this gorgeous... Oh, I love it. And then Karen, I got this as a swap card. So look at this. It's a neat fold card. It stands up beautifully, but goes flat for mailing. So truly love this card as well. And then the right where you would write would be on the back. So that, there's a, a bit of show and tell. Um, and I think that if you, you just might be inspired by some of these. And I hope you're inspired to give that gold leafing a try. I think there is so much potential for there. From. And if you do, I would love to see what you do with it. So maybe share a sample in the comment section. All right. Thanks for joining me at this little earlier time today. And I'll see you next Monday at 7 o'clock. Bye.